talk about more circuit races. Or only one at least. Why do a dog is such a prominent thing in this game? It seems kind of random. It's always the one guy. I have an aggressive relationship with. Let's see if I can pull out ahead as quickly this time as I did last time. See, it's always the same guy that keeps running into the too. price to pay if you mess that up too. Can you stop dead in your tracks? Go in the other direction on this one this time. Go on the inside. I would ram him on the side just for fun, but usually I feel like it ends in my opponent's favor whenever I collide with someone. It is always fun being able to take a, a big world like this and just build races out of it by putting walls in arbitrary places. Actually, one thing that was kind of cool in at least one of the Opera Pure games, at least the third one, that's the one that I had the most experience with, you could actually create waypoint races yourself, just by placing waypoints at random in, in one of the free run levels. Which isn't quite the same as having like walls and whatnot you can put down, but you can make whatever paths you want to draw through the world. And the free roam areas in that game are awesome. Freestyle areas are more properly called. Some of that's pretty interesting ideas. One was just a big backyard park, but there were things like big cities. One was a dump, of all things. One was a, like a dock, of all things. I think that one actually had a train running somewhere that you could do silly things with too. You could go on a big barge as well. One well, of my favorite things about the game was just the creativity of the different freestyle courses. They weren't halfway through the race. Two and a half minutes in. Yeah, I've not pulled ahead super far yet. It did take us a while to get into first year. Can't look behind myself, unfortunately, to see how close my opponents are. Oh. It's easy to just drift a little bit by accident. One thing that's a little annoying about motion controls for this sort of thing is... If you're trying to emulate, say, steering something with motion controls, and there's basically no weight at all to the Wii Remote and Nutshuck. And the two of them aren't even connected to each other or anything in a rigid fashion, just by a loose wire. So you can rotate one at random without rotating the other, and that'll impact your movement in subtle ways, like this right now. I'm only moving the weird mode to steer. Or I can do the same with the nunchuck. I'm only steering with the nunchuck now. But you don't get the, the haptic feedback you get from actually steering something where you can feel it resisting your your push a little bit. Which kind of helps indicate that you're actually doing something. So you can accidentally drift a little bit in the orientation of the remotes without realizing. 
and thus end up changing the direction you're steering without realizing you're really doing so. Looks like it's easier to do some fairly subtle turns though. By god, that was brave. And much like in the skiing races, it does feel nice doing some subtle turns. Just uh, keep high speed while also going around a bend or something. Let's see if we can beat five minutes. I don't think we will based on our previous lap times. We have to shave off a good few seconds off of this lap to do that. We should be at like 5.10 or so. You can't hit bushes, but you can hit the bridge. That you cannot see due to the bushes. How do you... How do you even do it again? I really cannot tell. Oh well. Keys. Alright. Jeez, that was almost half the episode there. Oops. I'll discover what style is on my own, which I need, can probably guess. Five stages. Probably s shorter ones this time, though. If I had to guess. Solo. Part time, a minute 45. These are pretty long, though. I guess it's just with how big the game world is, and the fact that it doesn't have to all be downhill. Oh, I recognize that sound. Slalom, indeed. Just like the old days. I imagine, like, in the whiskey game, slaloms, you just get time reduction if you miss one of the parts. Long the gates. Beautiful. How do they put you on a track and give you slalom flags? I guess just to help you keep track of where the next ones are going to be. Just the, the main difficulty in slalom in basically any game I've played is always. I don't know how to end anymore. It's basically always figuring out where the next flags are. <laughs> sorts of weird narrow passageways, I imagine. You could really abuse that in lots of places here, I feel like, to make things a lot more difficult for the player. It's so really give you basically multiple paths you can go through. I happen to land at that useful angle, very nice. It's really basically giving multiple paths, but then force you down one using the, the flags, the gates. One little thing to note, as far as doing tricks is concerned. You actually lose the ability to steer in the air while you're doing a trick, 
Whereas you can subtly influence where you're facing in the air otherwise. Is it the same target time for all of them? It's autumn, so... Not much of a jump. We're gonna have to remember to go back to surfing at some point, too. We haven't done tube surfing yet. More visibility. 260's pro probably the most dangerous trick to do, actually. <laughs> And this can turn you around. Did you mess it up? Oh, come on. That's pretty subtle. That's a really good back one. Two of them, in fact. Zoom. <laughs> I can the dog at center stage. Like, we zoom in and out on the dog. We're already deep in the water, very nice. That's a slime, alright. Side to side. just happen to bump something a little bit. Whoops. I can put just a little bit off. Jeez. So much for sound. It's kind of weird. That last part's kind of mean, though. It comes right out of nowhere. That all has multiple animations. the same place. Okay. Okay, come on. Is this basically just a longer version of the same one this time? I notice we have different target times now. Okay, we're doing something different here. Okay, nice little side shift there. Man. <laughs> Got me pretty close on some of these. Gates on this thing. There we go. I think 
so twisted and turned that I eventually get to a point where... That's why I say it's dangerous to do that. I eventually get to a point where even just like normal gentle turns start throwing me off. It seems worthy of a final sound challenge though, I like that. Oh! I hate bump bumping into things like that though and suddenly being thrown way off course. Climb. Alright. That's it for the episode 2, as I had predicted last time. That guy to my right is very, very, very pale. All those keys. So we're getting there. trophy that we still cannot actually see. So really keep I keep unlocking Phyllis stuff without actually being able to go to the villa yet. I imagine you probably unlock that by doing stamp dash or something like that, so that's probably why I haven't actually seen it yet. There is a good deal of stuff left to do here, but we also have a good deal of stuff done, so we're getting you somewhere. I'm kind of in the mood for surfing now though, so I think I'll do that next time. We might be able to do that in one episode. Let's see. So I'll head on over to the drop off point for that, and then I'll call it an episode. And that'll be the last episode I record this week, too. Nice gentle turns. I forget how far out this one dock is. It's pretty out of the way. Right this way. Hi everyone. They ask a confirmation this time. <laughs> 